All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Fireside Giants, not the podcast this time. Today, it's going to be me, Anthony Rivardo, going to do a breakdown right here on Matt Parrott, our third-round pick out of UConn, the offensive tackle, number 99 overall. I love this pick. I was very open and adamant about how much I love this pick on our latest podcast episode with The Entertainer. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. We graded the draft class, went through each and every player in the class, um, discuss them, pros and cons, what we love, what we don't love, and that's pretty much it. So go check that out if you haven't seen it already. But without further ado, let's get into this breakdown video of number 65 on UConn, the right tackle, Matt Parrott. Okay, so in this video, we're going to get into the strengths and the weaknesses of Matt Parrott. We're going to break down some good plays, some bad plays, and a little in between. Uh, we're going to watch the game versus USF. We're going to watch some Senior Bowl clips, and we're going to watch um, one other game. I forget who it's against, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so to start it out, first in first quarter, 11-13, third and 11, Matt Parrott is right here playing right tackle as per usual. So let's watch this play, and then we'll break it down. So if you couldn't tell, that was definitely a good play. Um, that's an awesome pass set from Matt Parrott. So we'll try to play it in slow-mo here. You're going to see a really nice kick step, right? And then he initiates the contact, which you'd love to see. I know I did the Makai Becton breakdown video. That was me who did that. I know uh, Mike does most of the breakdowns on this channel. He does an excellent job. Um, and he's going to be having a few up for this draft class, so stay tuned for that. But I did the Makai Becton one like over a month ago, and... Um, initiating contact was a huge flaw in Makai Becton's game. Uh, his hands would stay at his waist for like way too long, and then the defenders would initiate the contact, and it would create like a whole load of problems. Um, Becton, great player, great potential, not very technically sound, but Matt Parrott has some pretty good technique here. And so we're going to see, like I said, a very nice kick step to get to the spot. You can you can compare him to the other tackle, how he's in the spot, and he's, he's getting there quickly. And he sets up after initiating the contact. He's got him. And you're just going to see he mirrors this pass rusher all the way and easily just pushes him backward. Um, he doesn't give up an inch. There's, there's no push inside of the pocket off of the edge here. He easily just redirects the edge rusher backwards. And he just mirrors him the entire way. And that's my favorite thing about Matt Parrott because the footwork is phenomenal and it allows him to literally just mirror defenders. He can they'll run a circle. And he will be able to run that circle with them and not let them get to the quarterback because he has just such quick and agile feet. And he's able to stay in front of them the entire way, even if he does mess up with the hands sometimes, which he does. And we're going to get into that. The feet are typically always a positive. Um, he always is able to mirror the defender and stay in front of them. And this play is a real perfect example of it. Okay, so here's one of the negative plays I have from Matt Pert. Uh, you're going to see it's actually a decent play, but there's something wrong with it. He's right here. It's going to be a run play. I like the technique in run blocking to seal off and open up this hole. But what I don't like is you're going to see how vertical his body is. There's no knee bend. He is getting pushed backward. Uh, he has no strength going into this block. He's not anchoring down and really pulling this defender away. He is allowing this defender to easily just walk him backwards. Uh, and that's just, he's he doesn't have the strength yet. Uh, and this is going to be a problem at the NFL level. If he doesn't add this strength, he needs to add this strength because you can't just be walked back like this. You can't be standing straight up as an offensive lineman. Um, think more uh, how this guy is more horizontal. Uh, he's more vertical, leaned forward. That's how you would want to see Matt Pert be right here. You'd want to see him driving this defender back while sealing him off not just getting walked backwards towards the running back. He does anchor himself, um, and he doesn't let this defender get to the running back, and he opens up a nice hole for a touchdown right there. But obviously, we're not talking about playing against UConn competition. We're talking about playing against NFL competition. He might not get away with this. He might get put on his backside uh, if he's letting a defender walk him backwards like this and standing straight up because you just have no leverage in that case. Yeah, I really like when we're able to get these sky cam views where we can see it, the entire offensive line straight on and how they react to the defenders because it really lets you look at an individual battle right here. And that's what we're going to do with Matt Parrott um, against this edge rusher. 
you're going to see this is going to, going to be a play where I'm going to demonstrate his bad hand placement. So let's roll it. Yeah. So you see he gets out of his kick step is good. His footwork is good. But look at what he does with his hands here. They're so wide. There's no strength being put into that. He's about he's trying to clamp and put his hands on each one of the defender's shoulders rather than keeping his elbows tucked and blocking. He's trying to grab the defender by the shoulders. And, you know, he, he kind of misses with the left hand. He gets him with the right hand and he grabs the shoulder. Uh, he gets this one low, which is actually a good thing. Low and high, that's what you want. But look at how hunched over he has to get and so off balance because of the way he did this. And, you know, quite frankly, if he's lining up against Khalil Mack and he puts his arms that wide, what's Khalil Mack going to do? He's going to bull rush straight through Matt Parrott's chest and get to the quarterback. Simply put, that's just what he's going to do. He's going to do it easily, too. But obviously, we're talking about a different competition level here, which is one of the knocks that you can have on Matt Parrott. He did not play against the best of competition playing for UConn. But I do like the feet. Uh, it's just this hand... This hand placement, this um, this is not well done. Uh, getting your getting your arms that wide is just going to leave a huge strike zone on your chest for any defender to run right through, and you completely compromise all of your leverage and power when you do this. And uh, it's a technical flaw, but it can be cleaned up easily. Uh, Mark Colombo will get this cleaned up. I, I I definitely believe that. But like I said, I do like the low to high thing. It's just I mean, look at his body here. He's totally messed this play up. Good thing the ball comes out quick. Uh, nice throw there. But, yeah, I, this is something that can be worked on. It's just the hand placement here is just one example of it not being so good. So here's a really nice pass set at the beginning of the fourth quarter of this game versus USF. Uh, again, lined up at right tackle right here. You're going to see him really mirror this defender well and then finish the play really nicely. So we'll roll it back real quick, right here. Uh, he gets out of his stance really quickly. You can see in comparison to the rest of the line, he's out of there fast. Nice kick step. And he gets his hands up. You know, he initiates the contact, which we always like to see. And what I do like about his handwork is he's able to grip and pull. He's able to get his hands inside and grab these defenders and control them, which is what you want to see. When he does it right, he does it really well. Uh, it's just he doesn't always do it right, like the other play that I showed where his hands got too wide and he compromises leverage, yada, yada. But you can see here, and this is, the knee bend is actually really nice here. I know another play that I'm going to point out, uh, the knee bend was not so great. But on this play, he gets out of his stance quickly and well, and he initiates the contact, and he's able to grab here. And I just love how he's mirroring the defender the entire way. Look at how his body just pivots with the defender. His feet just stay with it. And... You know, and then if you watch the end of this play here, he's able to pull him down because he had that nice clinch uh, with the hands inside, and he grabbed them and he pulls him down to the ground, and he's able to just get on top of him. I love it, the tenacity. Uh, this is just a great play in pass protection by Matt Perry. Uh, this is where you see that NFL potential and why he was a really great pick at 99 overall. All right, so here's a really nice athletic play in the run game by Matt Perry. I believe that's how you say his name. You're going to see he's lined up right here at right tackle, and they're going to run the ball to the right side and score a touchdown on fourth and goal. It's a clutch play, but it can't be done without the great blocking by Matt Parrott right here. So he's a lead blocker out in front, and he, he does a perfect job here. Um, that's you know, simply put. He gets out in front, and he stays patient. He doesn't immediately get upfield. He just waits. He looks around and finds the guy. And the running back does a great job staying patient as well and just following number 65. And eventually he finds the man that he needs to block, and he springs up, and he pushes him back, and he creates a wide open lane for the running back to score an easy, easy touchdown. Uh, just a phenomenal job getting out in space, blocking, and having the quickness to get there and then figuring out who to block and then pushing him down, creating a lane. Great job by Matt Parrott here. Uh, Saquon Barkley is going to love that. 
All right, here's another great sky cam play. We can see all five of the offensive linemen. I love it. Matt Parrott right here playing right tackle as always. Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but how twitchy is his lower half? How twitchy are his feet? Look at the agility. Um, he sees the defender is thinking about going inside. He really just widens his base quickly, gets in position. I love the footwork on that pair. I think his feet are really, really agile. His lower half is really, really flexible. And I think just that alone gives him the solid baseline of technique and potential to at least be a competent starter in the NFL. And things like that, that seeing that on the film before the draft is what told me, if they get him, they're going to be lucky. And like I said, I like the high-low uh, hand placement. It's not always perfect with him. Sometimes gets a little wide, as we've discussed. But this play, this footwork, this foot agility is just one of the things that make you really fall in love with Matt Parrott as a prospect and now as an NFL player. The potential of him, it's, it's there because of plays like this with this incredible quick footwork. So twitchy. All right, so before we move on to the senior bull clips, we're going to watch two plays where uh, Matt Parrott picks up a stunt successfully and fails to pick up a stunt because obviously stunt plays are really important at the next level in the NFL, especially against the Dallas Cowboys. They run a lot of stunts. So do the Eagles. Um, when you're going up against these really athletic defensive fronts, you want to know how to pick up a stunt. You want to be able to rely on your right tackle to do so. So let's see how Matt Parrott handles a stunt right here. So, wow, that was a laser throw, um, but we'll see it from this angle as well. Yeah, I mean, it can't get much better than that. Maybe it could, uh, but I don't think so. So here he is. I don't know. I keep, keep pointing him out, but you're going to see he helps a little bit here. Uh, maybe he thought that was supposed to be his guy, but he saw this stunt coming and just watch that lower half get to work. Watch that quick footwork. Let him get in position. He was out of position. Let him just quickly shuffle into position. Nice hand placement and good contact initiation as we've discussed. And then he mirrors the defender and he just easily glides him back out of the pocket. Gives a lot of cushion for this quarterback to deliver a really nice throw. Let's watch it from the, the other angle too. So you're going to see this is the guy he's going to end up picking up on the blitz. He's going to come around this way. This guy's going to come around this way. That's what a stunt is. And so he's in position for this guy. And then that guy goes inside. So what does he do? He moves inside with him, but keeps his eyes straight ahead. He keeps his head up, and he sees that blitzer coming. And he's able to get off of this block of number 42, focus on number 11, because look at how he just completely changed his direction uh, with his feet, with just a really quick lower half. With really quick feet, he's able to shift his body, shift all of his weight, mirror himself to that edge rusher, step in front of him, and anchor down. Uh, yeah, I really like the, the hand placement as well, high-low. Uh, he's got his hand right on the strike zone, right in the center of the chest, and he's going to grip that, make sure that he doesn't get walked backwards this time. And, yeah, I just think this is an excellent stunt pickup. We're going to get into one more play after this where he doesn't pick up the stunt as well. But on this play, I think it's a really great demonstration, once again, of those quick feet, that great footwork. And he's a high IQ player. That's what he is. Matt Pert is a high IQ player. All right, I know I just got done calling Matt Pear a high IQ player. He's not going to look like it on this play, but even the highest of IQ players, they have their mess-ups every now and then. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, they throw interceptions. Matt Pear can mess up in pass protection and still be a high IQ player. Okay, so here he is, right tackle. It's third and 11. He's going to fail to pick up this stunt, and it's, it's going to look a little ugly here. So he never saw it coming. Um... You know, let me let me play through the whole play so you could see the result of it too. Ends up being a fumble. It wasn't his guy who forced the fumble. It was someone else's. But here we go. Parrot, he sees this man, and this is who he's going after. This is the guy he's got to pick up. Uh, it's more of an inside linebacker blitz. Maybe you could say that it's not a stunt. Uh, I think the way that they ran it, how they they crossed those two defenders and. 
I, I think it, it does classify as a stunt because he is supposed to pass this man off to the left or the right guard, sorry, and he's supposed to pick up the blitzer, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't see that blitzer coming, and he just tries to move this guy across the line, and he 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 just doesn't see this guy coming. He leaves his right right guard um, like a deer in headlights. He's got to try and recover. He, he doesn't really. He does. He recovers, but not well. So let's see one more time where you're just going to see he gets locked in on this guy. You see, as soon as his hands went up, you knew he was going after this guy. He didn't ever see this guy coming by because, you know, he puts his head down and he just tries to lunge forward so that he can move him across the pocket because he doesn't really have the strength to do it any other way. But it, it, him just putting his head down makes it so he can't see this actual blitzer that he's supposed to pick up. And he does a good job of pushing this guy across the pocket. That's, that's the right thing to do if that's his assignment but it's not this is his assignment and this guy was supposed to get this guy um the, the right guard was supposed to get the the rusher that matt parrot is getting parrot was supposed to just allow him to mo move over to the right guard and then stay right here because look at this huge lane that matt parrot is just allowing uh to the quarterback he's supposed to stay here uh stand strong and anchor down against this guy but obviously we just discussed how he did the wrong thing here so Matt Pert, Matt Pert was indeed a participant at the Senior Bowl, and I have a few clips from that uh, Senior Bowl practice week where you're going to see some of his strengths and weakness come up there. Uh, this time he's going up against Josh Uchi out of Michigan, made a pro this week. Congratulations to him, the both of them really. And Uchi is going to lose this battle to Matt Pert. Um, it's, he's going to win some others, but this one he's going to lose. You're going to see this right here. Yeah, well done, well done by our, our new right tackle of the future, possibly. Um, so you're going to see nice footwork, gets out of his stance quick, meets Josh Uchi there, and look at this hand. He's got one low, one high, perfect. Gets him right on the chest, grabs and holds, clinches him, controls him. Uchi tries to get the corner, he can't because of that excellent hand placement to start to initiate the contact by Parrot. And he's going to basically just be able to Put him in a headlock. Uh, I mean, this is an excellent pass pass set. Uh, probably shouldn't do that at the end. That's that could be a hold, but you know what? We can clean that up. Um, I just love the footwork and I love the hand placement to initiate the contact. High, right in the chest, boom. Uh, keep that one low. And you know he clinches, he holds well, and um, not in holds is in holding, but he clinches and his strength is strong enough to anchor him and keep Josh Uchi from picking up more speed. And I guess this is supposed to be the simulated quarterback on this drill. And yeah, that's a that's a clean pocket right there, I would say. Um, he stood him up. And that's, that's a perfect pass rep. Okay, more stuff from the Senior Bowl going against Josh Uchi again. And he's not going to win this one like he did the other one. So he's playing left tackle this time, so maybe that has something to do with it. Obviously, Matt Parrott played right tackle in college, um, or at least his final two years of college. He might have played left tackle his first two. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that. But going against Josh Uchi, uh, real speed rusher here. I don't know if you guys know this, but Josh Uchi has a lot of speed off the edge. And you're going to see he struggles with that. Uh, Matt Parrott definitely struggles going up against ultra-fast defensive ends, edge rushers. Um, he struggled a lot with it versus Uchi and Zach Bond here at the Senior Bowl. We're going to pull up some of those Zach Bond clips because they weren't pretty. Um, so, yeah, you know, the initial footwork. Uh, let's look at the kick step. Okay, the kick step is good. Ah, but that, his feet get, they get put in cement. Uh, they get still, and he misses this initial contact blow. Um, you see... That's not good. You don't want to get your feet still and plant them and try and anchor before you even made contact. Um, you definitely want to keep gliding with him. We've seen him do it before. We've seen him mirror edge rushers before. I'm not sure what happened here. Also, um, no, never mind about that. Yeah, so the hand placement, he completely whips on that and he rides the hip. And Uchi has the speed to just fly by him. Uh, this is something that probably didn't happen to Matt Parrott a lot at UConn. He probably didn't feel that type of speed off of the edge, and that's why he's going to have to get acclimated. I don't think he's a day-one starter uh, on any team. I think he would have he would have had to sit at least half a season on any team, and I think for the Giants, they, they have the depth at offensive line where they can let him sit for a year and develop. 
And I think a play like this is a real perfect example of why he needs to. I, I just don't think he's ready for this type of speed yet. Um, so yeah, you'll see one more time. We'll roll it back. You're going to see the feeder find the start, and then they just get flat, and they stop moving, and he tries to lunge forward and make this block, but that speed, it's not going to happen. He's completely off balance here. He's riding the hip. Not good. Uh, there you go. You can watch one more time at full speed. You see the feet plant. They get still. He misses, and he gets beat. Okay, now we're going to look at Matt Parrott versus Zach Bond at the Senior Bowl. We just looked at a clip against Josh Uchi. So now let's switch over to Bond. Another loss here for Matt Parrott, unfortunately. But Zach Bond was a great prospect. He did have round one buzz. I know he fell. I think the diluted um, or the, the the drug test that didn't go well. I don't know if he had the diluted one. That might have been Mackay Becton. It's all blending together now. But anyway, you know the story. Uh, he fell because of a failed drug test of sorts uh urine sample or something so but he's still really talented he is like a first round or early second round talent and he's a great pass rusher he has a lot of speed off the edge and we're going to talk about how he struggled against the speed rushers here at the senior bowl and you're going to see that on this play so this time um he chased them all around uh this time i wouldn't say that the feet get flat and cause the problem the feet move the entire time you know it's fine um, he probably should have gotten a little bit more on an angle, a little bit further back here, uh, going against such speed off the edge. But then again, he, he really didn't know what was coming at him. Um, I think just this is great hand fighting by Zach Bond to really chop this hand away by Matt Parrott. And I think that's it's a it's just a great win by Zach Bond more than it is a bad loss by Matt Parrott. Um, look, I mean, you can see what Bond does there, and then he tries to swipe that hand away and you know this wouldn't have let up a sack you can get by with this but it's at least a pressure and if for some reason the quarterback is not paying attention uh, maybe he gets whacked here I, I doubt it though uh, it's not like a really terrible loss but you know it, it's not a win um, I, I, again I don't think the footwork is the problem here I, I think the footwork is fine I think his feet are still really nimble but I just think he let he, his hand doesn't it just gets chopped down really quickly um, it's not it's not coming in there with a whole lot of force and power. Uh, he's not exactly taking the right path towards the edge rusher, and he tries to mirror him, but I just don't think he I don't think he does. I think if he was mirroring him, he would have been up here. He would have been vertical with the line of scrimmage here, perpendicular with it there. But instead, he's turned towards that way, and obviously, he's allowing Bond to get around the edge. So I, I just think. More the hands than anything here, but I just think he's not ready for this type of speed off the edge uh, playing at UConn. I don't think he really ever went against such talent and uh, strong competition like this, and I think it was a little bit of a wake-up call for him when he got to the Senior Bowl. Uh, we also have this angle right here. Yeah, you're going to see. I mean, it, this angle actually does make it look a little bit worse. Um, so, you know, he actually does place that pretty well. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the hand placement there is pretty good. But where's this right hand? Where is it? Yeah, it's nowhere to be found until it finally gets on the back of Zach Bond. Uh, it didn't get up quick enough. The hands weren't quick enough. Um, and like I said, I think he should be going this way. Not so much this way. Uh, he gets turned really easy here. But I just think it's such a great play by, uh, you know, that could actually potentially be a hold right there if he's just grabbing onto Bond's neck. But I just think it's a great play by Zach Bond. Uh, it's a great pass rush, great hand fighting. He does an excellent job. Uh, pushing pushing Matt Parrott's hand away and I just think you know I, I think it's the hand placement with Matt Parrott I think if he if he has to improve on anything that's what it is it's the hand placement okay so this next play is from UConn's matchup against Wagner Matt Parrott again lined up at right tackle and you're going to see this is a negative play so let's break it down So as you can see, he got bull rushed really hard here. Um, let's see what went wrong. So footwork looks fine, and he's there. He's in front of him. But let's see. Let's see how wide these arms get. Again, it's going to be the hand placement is the problem. The hands are really wide here, and he leaves a giant strike zone on his chest once again. And the defender takes advantage of that. He bull rushes right through. He puts his hands right on Matt Parrott's chest and puts all of his strength into it. 
And Matt Parrott, just simply put, does not have the strength to defend against the bull rush right now. Uh, that's definitely another thing he needs to work on that I've mentioned. He needs to work on adding strength because it's not up to NFL level yet. And fixing the hand placement is going to go a long way as well. Because as you can see on this play, when those two flaws combine together, it's ugly. This is a sack given up by Matt Parrott just because he got pushed so far back into his quarterback that he ended up tripping his quarterback. So this is a given up sack by Matt Parrott here. And I think we've identified the two main problems uh, that caused it. All right, here's another play where I'm going to make the point that Matt Parrott needs to add strength at the NFL level. Right tackle once again. Let's see it. So he's going to be pulling here, uh, trying to be a lead blocker right out in front of for his running back. And so he gets off the line and initiates this contact well. Probably the hands are a little too wide again. Um, uh, you know, it's not too bad, but just look at how he gets stood up. Stood right up here. Does not get any push on this lineman. Does not walk him backwards at all. Um, you know, definitely the hand placement is part of the issue. I, I don't think that's necessarily bad if he's doing a um, a different type of block, but as a as a pulling blocker getting out in front, I don't think you want to be doing that grab technique there. Uh, so definitely hand placement's a problem again, and then strength, once again. Um, he just gets uh, stood up there. You can see it at the end of the play even. So he's going to pull, going to run into the guy, and it's basically like he ran into a wall. He doesn't get, he gets walked backwards a little bit, doesn't gain any ground. Um, to be fair, not much of the offensive line did much here. Uh, he's the only one who actually made a solid initiated contact block. Look at all of these guys who just whiffed pretty much. So he did better than them, um, but you definitely want to see him go into that block and put a little more oomph into it and knock that defender backwards and not get pushed back himself. All right, last play, not the best lead block. This play, a lot better. So let's check it out. So you can see those quick feet again, and he actually does put a lot of strength into this play, and he really executes a perfect combo block with the tight end. So he's going to get out of his stance. He's going to, they're going to double team block this guy, and they're just going to move that man like he's a, a tackle sled. And obviously Matt Parrott is a big part of that, and he really opens up a hole here for the running back. Number 64 doesn't do as good of a job, so it's not a huge gain. Uh, he gets shedded at the end of that play. But still, it's a great play by Matt Parrott. I really like how he's got his body turned completely away from the line of scrimmage you see these linemen are turned this way he's turned that way and that's how he opens up this hole right here and does a great job at doing that he opens up that a really big hole there UConn ran the ball a lot in the first half of this game so we got another nice run blocking play from Matt Perry here so let's watch it And did anybody else see those pancakes? Matt Parrot dropped a few pancakes on the field. All right, here he is once again. Let's see. So he lets that guy go. Because there's a pulling guard who's going to get him. It's a trap. And he gets to that second level. Gets in back in stance. Widens his base. Initiates the contact. And then he finishes the play. See, I, I do like how he, he gets his hands inside and holds on to that shoulder pad. It's it's the way that you control the defender. It's it's a really good advanced technique by an offensive lineman. It's just sometimes a hand placement. It's not about the hand strength because the hand strength is there and the grip is really good on Matt Parrott. It's about sometimes he misses and he doesn't really hit the right strike zone. But as you can see right here, really nice strong hands. Gets a hold of the lineman or the defender, the linebacker. And just flattens him. I like how he just kept running afterwards, too. He did it with a lot of ease and just kept going. I uh, was ready to take another guy down if he had to, but he didn't have to. So I like this play. I like how he gets to the second level pretty quickly. And then I like how he flattens the guy. Man, that, that's, that's what you love to see. All right, so before we wrap up this video, I want to get one more pass blocking play in there. Since a lot of this video had his run blocking plays, I want to get one more pass blocking play. So here he is at right tackle against Wagner again. And you're going to see a really nice, smooth pass set where he mirrors the defender again. So 
So as you can see, we'll try to rewind it here. It does a nice job with the kick step, gets out of his stance. Notice where the hands are, one goes low, one goes high. Uh, probably gets a little wide there, but he does initiate the contact. And what I really like about this play is you can see at the end, when the quarterback steps through, this defender can't get off of this block because of where Matt Parrott's hand is. It's right on the chest, and it's got a really nice, strong grip on the defender's jersey, which is what you want to see. You want to see him clinching on and keeping that defender from getting away here, which is what he did, and he, he gave the quarterback some room to run and pick up a few yards. So it's a great job with, obviously, the footwork is always good with Matt Parrott, as we've said, pretty much always good. And then it's a good job anchoring down against this defender and clinching on, making sure that the defender doesn't have anywhere to go. So anyway, that's my Matt Parrott breakdown video for you guys. You know, be sure to subscribe, give it a like if you enjoyed. Um, you know, stay tuned for more awesome podcast episodes, more breakdown videos by myself, Mike, and Alex. Uh, we really appreciate all of your support. We thank you guys a ton for always being such great fans. You know, we really enjoy reading through the comments. I try to read through all of the comments. And so, you know, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Feedback is always welcomed. Um, again, appreciate it. Uh, make sure to go follow me on Twitter at Anthony underscore Rivardo. It'll be in the description, as well as the link to EmpireSportsMedia.com. I write articles. I cover the Giants there. So go read those. Check that out. There will be an article accompanying, accompanying this video where I do a strengths and weaknesses breakdown on Matt Parrott. So you can go read that um, so you can get an even better understanding of who Matt Parrott is as a player. So go check that out. Um, stay tuned, guys. Appreciate you again, and have a good one. Thank you.